Now we're going to talk about how to code and how to use a, a two-dimensional array. Okay, so I call this class double array test, but it's really a two-dimensional array test on two-dimensional arrays. So the first thing is how do you declare a two-dimensional array? Say we want a two-dimensional array of grades, just like we saw in the intuition video. This will be a double. Whoops. This will be Oops, wrong place. Okay, this would be a double. And then because it's a 2D array, we do this twice. One for, once for rows, once for columns, okay? 2D array called grades, okay? And the way we initialize this, we can initialize it in many ways. One, one way is this. Just like we initialize arrays with, uh, with curly braces, we can initialize arrays as a set of smaller arrays, one for each row. So for example, my grades in English were 3.4, uh, 4.0, uh, 3.2, and 3.4. That's the grades in English, comma, comma. Then in, uh, I'm just going to put that there, comma. Say for Spanish, my grades were 3.2. 3.9, 4.0, and 4.0, comma. Then for math, my grades were 2.3, 4.5, not 4.5, 4.0, 3.2, and 3.2, for example. And that's the last of my classes, right? So I have three classes. English, this would be English. This column here represents uh, Spanish. And this column here represents science, for example, or math or whatever, right? And then close the curly braces, semicolon. This is because a two-dimensional array, as we saw in the intuitions, was like a grid, but really is an array, which are an array of individual sub-arrays. Okay, that's the internal representation. For all practical purposes, for us, it's going to be a grid. This is how you declare it. This is how you declare it. Okay, and then the other important thing is how to print the array. Okay, so to print the array, remember in one dimensional arrays, in regular arrays, use a for loop. Now, because there's two dimensions here, you will use two for loops. So for i uh, and i equals zero, i less than, and then look at the array that we have here, look at the grid that we have here. First, we're going to loop through the rows. That's that's what goes first. Okay, so the rows I'm going to put here. The rows are grades dot length. That gives you the rows. <clears throat> Remember, because this is an array of arrays, right? These parentheses that match these curly braces that match right there, right there tell you that grades is one array. Now each element of the array of the array is another sub array. Right there. It's another array. So how many rows are there? Well you look at the big array there, signaled by the curly braces, and there are three elements. This one, this one, and this one. So the number of rows is that grades array dot length. How many elements does grade have? Grades have. It has three elements. Those three elements. Now, <clears throat> how many columns does it have? Well, they all have the same number of columns, right? So if I go to this element and see and check the length of this array, right? So if I check the length of this array, that should tell me how many columns there are. One, two, three, four, four numbers, right? This is the length of this array. And this array there is grades sub zero. It's the first element in grades. The first element in grades is that array, and the length of that is that length. Okay, so the the number of rows is grades, or the name of the array dot length, and the number of columns is that array sub zero or any any given row dot length. Okay, so our loop will go for i equals zero, i less than rows, i plus plus, and then for and i equals zero uh, j equals zero, j is less than 
columns j plus plus and then at each iteration we are going to print the element at position ij so for example we're going to do system dot out dot print line grades and this is how you refer to an element grades columns I mean rows and columns okay this is very important the element ij let's say i is 0 and j is 0 that will be the element 0 0 right here row 0 column 0 if i is, th is 2 and j is 3 it'll be column 2 I mean row 2 column 3 row 2 0 1 2 and then column 3 0 1 2 3 it'll be that element okay so 2 and 3 will be that element I and J indicate the row and the column of the element that I'm trying to access and just like any other array when I access that element this immediately becomes this double number here 3.2 okay so let's compile this program and run it <clears throat> and you will see a little uh, something about the printout this will print the array but it will pin print all of the elements because this is a print line it will print all of the elements uh, vertically so those are all the elements 3.4 4.0 3.2 3.4 that is 3.4 4.0 3.2 3.4 that's the first row right one, two, three, four. Then this is the second row. The next four are the second row. You can check this against the second row right here. And you can check that the last row is here. Last row is here. Now, how do we print them so that um, so that it looks like this, like, like the grid? Well, a quick, easy trick would be to say this. Put curly braces around your first for loop, right? And you say... print grades plus and we're gonna put a little space here okay so what this will do is for all rows okay so for or for all rows it's going to print all columns right so they they should be printed now that I don't have a print line they should be printed to the side but what if I do this for all rows what you're gonna do is print all of the columns and then System dot out dot print let skip a line again for all rows or for each row check each column and print it after you've done after you're done checking each column skip one line and then proceed to the next row right because that's what this uh, that's what this brace here does is the for loop take a look at this and analyze it. We're going to compile it and run it. And you'll see that this now looks like our grid. 3.4, 4.0, 3.2, Same thing that we have here. 3.2, 3.9, 4, 4, 4.0. Here. And the last row corresponds to the last row as well. Okay. So that is the basics for uh, declaring and printing a two-dimensional array.